Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today we will be learning about the Google Summer of Code or also known as the GSOC Roadmap for 2025. Google Summer of Code is a prestigious global program that offers contributors a unique opportunity to work on open source projects with renowned organizations. It fosters learning, networking, and real-world development experience, making participants stand out in their careers. GSOC also encourages a global exchange of ideas, helping contributors connect with mentors and communities worldwide. Through meaningful contributions, participants build strong portfolios that stand out to future employers. Moreover, the program nurtures a sense of community, teamwork, and satisfaction of giving back to the open source ecosystem. This tutorial is not only about the Google Summer of Code Roadmap, it is also about acing the GSOC 2025. We will start with the understanding of what exactly is GSOC and why should you enroll in it. Following that, we will have a detailed timeline of GSOC and how to prepare if you want to crack in. Freshers are often prone to lack of confidence, which ends up as their Achilles heel. We will focus on ensuring that you are prepared for what's heading your way and succeed in your endeavor. Last but not least, tips and tricks for GSOC 2025. Sometimes a few tips and tricks under your sleeve are prone to the heartbeat of professional success. Our tips and tricks section is where we scout the intangible qualities that transform your careers from ordinary to extraordinary. So buckle up. That said, if these are the type of videos you'd like to watch, then hit that like and subscribe buttons and the bell icon to get notified. Just for your quick info, if you want to upskill yourself, master full stack development and land your dream job, or grow in your career, then you must explore Simply Learn's code of various full stack development programs. Simply Learn offers various certification and postgraduate programs in collaboration with some of the world leading universities like Caltech, Purdue, IIT Kanpur, and many more. Through our courses, you will gain knowledge and work ready expertise in skills like full stack development, front end, back end, version control systems, API design, and over a dozen others. That's not all, you also get the opportunity to work on multiple projects and learn from industry experts working in top tier data and product companies and academics from top universities. After completing these courses, thousands of learners have transitioned into a full stack developer as a fresher or moved on to a higher paying job and profile. If you are passionate about making your career in this field, then make sure to check out the link in the pinned comment and description box below to find a full stack development program that fits your experience and areas of interest. Now, without further delay, let's get started. So what is GSOC? So GSOC or the Google Summer of Code is a global program organized by Google to encourage students and new contributors to engage with open source development. It provides an excellent platform for participants to learn, contribute to real world software projects, and gain hands-on experience working with established open source organizations. GSOC was launched in the year 2005 by Google to strengthen the open source ecosystem and encourage contributors from students worldwide. Over the years, it evolved into a global initiative with thousands of contributors and organizations participating annually. Each year, organizations from various domains like machine learning, web development, cybersecurity, and much more submit project ideas for GSOC. Students with relevant technological backgrounds apply to GSOC proposing how they would tackle specific projects. This allows participants to work on projects that match their skills, providing an ideal platform for growth. Participants engage with real-world software development practices such as version control system, collaboration, and agile workflows. GSOC offers similar experience to internships where participants can work under mentors and deliver tangible results. So why exactly should I participate in GSOC is our next question. GSOC offers an attractive opportunity for contributors to work in real-world projects, earns competitive stipends, and gain valuable open source experience. So there are much more like this. So let's start with these on the screen. No criteria, no cutoff, various diversities, lot of categories to work in, big opportunities, you can build your own portfolio and gain a lot of experience in real world scenarios. So let's get started with each one of these. Firstly, no criteria. GSOC is open to all contributors who meet the age requirement 
without focusing on specific academic qualifications or certifications. The program values skills and commitment, making it an inclusive opportunity for anyone passionate about open source. The second one is no cutoffs or mandatory degrees. Unlike many traditional programs, GSOC does not require you to meet CGPA or GPA cutoffs or hold specific degrees. It provides a level playing field for contributors from diverse backgrounds to showcase their abilities. Now, the third one is about diverse organizations and projects. Each year, hundreds of renowned companies participate in GSOC, offering challenging and innovative projects. These organizations also provide competitive stipends, making the program both rewarding and motivating. Project categories is the next one. Project categories are classified based on their scope and complexity into three categories, small, medium, and large. And the stipend pay scale also varies accordingly. So, if you are working at small projects, then you can expect pay grades from $500 to $700. If you are working with medium range projects, then you can expect a stipend ranging from $1,000 to $1,500. And if you're working with large scale projects, then you can expect at least $3,000 or more than that. This categorization ensures that the contributors are fairly compensated for their efforts. Now proceeding ahead, exceptional learning opportunity. GSOC offers unparalleled exposure to real world coding practices, collaboration with experienced mentors, and the chance to contribute to impactful open source software. Proceeding ahead, we have the sixth one, which is about build a dominant portfolio. By participating in GSOC, you gain the experience and credibility to stand out in the competitive job markets. Your contributions become a testament to your skills and dedication, helping you build a standout portfolio. Proceeding ahead is the seventh and most important reasons of all, which is about a brilliant experience. The journey through GSOC is transformative, equipping participants with technical expertise, problem-solving skills, and a network of open source enthusiasts. It's more than a program. It's an experience that shapes your career and growth. Now, let's proceed with how to participate in GSOC and important timelines to focus on. Participating in GSOC involves selecting an open source organization, preparing a project proposal, and collaborating with mentors if selected. So we will be discussing all these three stages in a while. So for now, let's get started with timeline. Start by exploring a list of participating organizations in GSOC website. Identify their projects that match your skills and communicate with mentors to refine your ideas. Submitting a strong proposal is the key to showcasing your ability to contribute effectively. Now the important timelines to focus on, which are the announcement of organizations, proposal submission, and selection. Now let's understand each one of these in a bit more detail, which is the first one, which happens to be announcement of organizations. So this particular stage happens in the end of February or last week of February. Google releases the list of participating organizations by the end of February. This is the time to research each organization, understand their goals and review their project ideas. Reaching out to the mentors during this phase can help clarify expectations and refine your approach. Now, the next stage, which is about the proposal submission, and this happens in between March to April. The proposal submission phase begins in the March and typically lasts for a month. During this time, you must draft and submit a detailed proposal outlining your project plan, deliverables, and timeline. Make sure to highlight your skills, past experience, and how you will achieve the project goals. And now, the last stage, which is about the announcement of contributors which happens around the early May. Selected contributors are announced in early May. If you are chosen, you will be paired with a mentor and start preparing for the coding phase. This includes setting up your development environment, finalizing project goals, and scheduling regular mentor check-ins. Now, let's jump into the preparation or roadmap phase. So, the roadmap, or also known as the preparation phase of GSOC, is as follows. Preparation for GSOC requires self-driven learning and a proactive mindset. Focus on improving your coding skills and understanding open source contributions. Mentors guide you, but GSOC is not a hand-holding program. 
Candidates are expected to work independently. Ensure you have a strong foundation in programming, version control, which is about Git and GitHub, and documenting to effectively contribute to projects. Now, let's start with some popular programming languages. While GSOC projects are across various domains, some programming languages are most commonly used. Having a solid understanding of these languages can increase your chances of matching project requirements. So the following are the programs, Python, Java, Ruby, JavaScript, PHP. Python is widely used for web development, data analysis, and machine learning projects. Java is the backend development enterprise level applications. Ruby is popular for web frameworks like Ruby on Rails, which is often used in community-driven projects. Next is JavaScript, which is essential for web development, both front-end and back-end. And lastly, we have PHP, which is very frequently used in content management systems, which is also known as CMS, and web applications. Familiarity with these programming languages will help you adapt to various projects across different organizations. If you are new to coding, you can still participate in GSOC by focusing on smaller projects that require basic programming knowledge. Many open source organizations welcome beginners who are enthusiastic and willing to learn. Start with the basics of these beginner-friendly languages like C, C++, C Sharp, and Perl, PHP, right? Perl, which is used for text processing and scripting, and it is also great for automating tasks. And next we have is PHP, a widely used programming language for building dynamic web pages and backend services. And C, C Sharp, and C++ are fundamental languages used in various domains for system programming and game development. With a grasp of these programming basics, problem solving, and project collaboration, even beginners can contribute meaningfully to smaller GSOC projects. Now, let's move on to the next part, which is about building your own projects. The best way to prepare for GSOC is by building your own projects to gain hands-on experience. Focusing on writing clean, functional code and understanding how to solve real-world problems, avoid diving into complex code bases of open source projects without practical knowledge. It will only confuse you. So it's better to start with small, with personal or community driven projects to strengthen your skills and build confidence before contributing to larger, more complex GSOC projects. Next is learning the version control systems. Understanding version control is essential for collaborating on open source projects. Learn how to use Git and GitHub for branching, versioning, making commits, and performing pull or push requests or operations to contribute effectively to repositories. Now next ahead is learn to make open source contributions. Start by contributing to beginner-friendly repositories and get familiar with the process. Contribution can include fixing bugs, improving documentation, or suggesting new features. Each step helps you build confidence and credibility. Next is for referring to open source codes. Refer to open source codes to understand how real world projects are structured and implemented. Analyze the code base to learn best practices, but make sure to build your own projects to reinforce your learning. Next is use any projects or old GSOC projects. Explore various GSOC projects to see the types of tasks contributors worked on. You can also use older projects as learning resources or inspiration to build similar projects on your own. Moving ahead, we have the next stage, which is about picking the organizations in which you are interested to work on. Choose organizations that align with your interests, whether it's about web development, machine learning, or cybersecurity. Working on projects you're passionate about will keep you motivated and make the learning process enjoyable. Next is selecting projects that you are interested in. Look for projects that match your skill set and interests. Focus on projects where you can make meaningful contributions while also learning something new on the process. Proceeding ahead, the next step is find improvements and contribute. Browse the organization's code base, identify areas for improvement, and start making open source contributions. This can help fixing bugs, optimizing code, or improving documentation. Small contributions can make a big impact. Next is read project description. Carefully read the project description provided by the organization to understand the scope, goals, and expectations. Identify key deliverables, technologies required, and any specific challenges mentioned to align with your approach with the requirements. The next step is write a detailed proposal with approach. Craft a well-structured proposal that outlines your approach to the project. 
include sections like objectives, timeline, technical stack, and deliverables. Highlight your understanding of the project by breaking it into milestones and explain how you plan to achieve each step. Followed by that, the next step is explain your implementation plans. Provide a clear implementation plan in your proposal, detailing how you will solve the problem step by step. Mention the tools, frameworks, and resources you will use along with the timeline to achieve milestones. A detailed plan shows the mentors that you are prepared and committed to completing the project successfully. Now that we have a detailed understanding of the preparation phase, let's get into the last phase of today's session, which is about the tips and tricks for attending GSOC. Enlist frequently participating organizations. Identify organizations that regularly participate in GSOC and review their past projects. Preparing early gives you an advantage in understanding their expectations and the technologies they focus on. Next is, pick the organization that you are interested in. Choose an organization that aligns with your skills and interests. Working on something you are passionate about will keep you motivated throughout the program and help you deliver better results. Proceeding ahead, we have the next one. Enlist multiple organizations to increase selection chances. Apply to multiple organizations to improve your chances of getting selected. Diversifying your options ensures that you have backup choices if your top preference doesn't work out. Next is focus on less competitive organizations for safety. While many participants aim for popular organizations, you can also target less known ones. These may have fewer applications, increasing your chances of being selected while still providing valuable learning experiences. Proceeding ahead, we have get connected with project maintainers. Engage with project maintainers through forums, mailing lists, or GitHub discussions. Asking relevant questions and contributing early will help you stand out and show your commitment. Start contributing early to gain attention. Begin contributing to the organization's projects before the application phase. Early contributors demonstrate their interest and commitment, making a positive impression on mentors. Next is maintain meaningful contact with maintainers. Keep in touch with your project maintainers through meaningful conversations. Respect their time by asking thoughtful questions and providing well-researched inputs. Moving ahead, we have to respect their time. Maintainers and mentors are often busy professionals. Be concise and respectful in your communication, making sure to value their time and their efforts. Lastly, make impactful contributions with mentor support. Focus on providing quality contributions rather than quantity. With the help of mentors, work on impactful fixes and features that add significant value to the project. Show initiative and a willingness to learn while contributing effectively. Lastly, to strengthen your proposal and make a lasting impression, we have included a selection of reference proposal links in the description. These examples will guide you in crafting a comprehensive and well-structured proposal, helping you effectively showcase your project approach and increase your chances of success. And with that, we have reached to the end of this session on GSOC Roadmap for 2025. Should you need any assistance, PPT and other resources used in this session, please let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be happy to help you as soon as possible. Until next time, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.